I remember when I was about 11 years old, I wrote my first story. It wasn't very good, it was cringy, grammatically flawed, but I remember I'd write stories with my best friend at the time and we'd trade stories and make little edits to help each other grow. We still do this to this day. I realized I had a vivid imagination and it fueled my love for drawing and creating. I wanted to paint pictures that capture people's attention and sing songs that moved people's hearts and write stories that gave people a mirror to look into and see themselves. If you look like I do, you might as well have a target on your back. I'm a tall, unathletic, nerdy, black kid. In elementary school, I've been teased, talked about, and bullied most of the time. People take issue with me. At best of times, they offer unsolicited advice, like lose weight or take up a sport. Even strangers on the street look at me suspiciously and fearfully. When I started middle school, I developed a defense mechanism. I created a persona with a loud, confident attitude who didn't give a damn about what people thought. But over time, I realized that this persona was getting in the way of who I really was. I realized I was actually playing into people's expectations rather than being my true self. I have allowed people to dictate how I should act and how my life should be. In my junior year, I went on a college tour with my school. Those few days were some of the best days in my life. In particular, when I visited some of the HBC, HBCUs, I just felt at home. I appreciated how inclusive they felt and understood that they had many possibilities for me. I felt like an actual person. I felt like I belonged and no one else could tell me what to do. Seagulls, 3D movies, blue toilet water, Darla from the movie Finding Nemo, anything old timey, throw up, the tooth fairy, applesauce, the subway, haircuts, people with big smiles, sleep, you might be wondering, what do all of these things have in common? Valid question. Each of them once paralyzed me with fear. My mouth would go dry, my brain would fog over, and I'd be overcome by the urge to flee. I was the most nervous, high maintenance kid ever, locked in my own personal mind jail. Sleep was torment, and adventures of any kind were out of the question. I was exhausted and exhausting. If only I could stay in my house, sheltered from my fears. In March of 2020, I got my wish. The pandemic was a time of devastation for so many people, but to be honest, it suited me. I got to hide from my ridiculous fears like I'd, be, like I'd been doing my whole life, inside the ultimate comfort zone, home. I started virtually hanging out with a bunch of kids through FaceTime. We spent long hours together, practically living and breathing on each other without living and breathing on each other. They gave me confidence to admit that something inside of me was changing. Surrounded by people who lifted me up, who loved all of me, I expanded and got stronger. When summer came around, I was ready to roll and show New York City who's changed. Soon I was storming the city by bike, by foot, by skateboard, even on the subway. That wildly anxious kid turned audacious. My father immigrated from the trenches of Kingston, Jamaica to ensure a better life for him and his daughter. My maternal grandmother immigrated from Guyana for the same reason. Both my parents, having been brought up in Caribbean households, were taught to never settle and worked and struggled throughout my upbringing just to provide for us and strive for more. My parents knew where I was coming from, but reminding me that despite not living in the greatest neighborhood or having the most luxurious home, I was still surrounded by people who loved me and wanted to see me succeed. I grew up not knowing anything about my own history. I felt as though I was not a real Guatemalan, a person with no background. My own culture seemed alien to me, forbidden. How could someone who didn't even know anything about their family history and roots participate in traditions? I sat with my grandmother one morning during breakfast and very quietly asked her the same questions I had asked my mother. While some stories were fun, like the village my grandmother lived in as a little girl, stories of demon masks, haunted rocks, and wendigos, I could no longer keep an outsider's view on the war and genocide that had occurred in Guatemala. Suddenly, I became directly connected to it. While the weight of what I had learned was heavy, I felt as though a weight had been lifted. I decided that I will not be the one to carry the stories of family members and educate others on the realities of war and genocide. I will continue dedicating every opportunity I receive to keep asking questions and learn rather than staying quiet. 
As I look into the future, I can truly say that I am grateful for any opportunity to pursue a higher education. As a first generation college student, I will be the first member of my family to graduate college. And I know if I apply myself, I can prove to people that I am way more than where I live. If I could go back in time and talk to those sixth graders on that field trip, I would advise them to not sleep on a project girl because you never know what she might become. As I think ahead to the next four years, I wonder where I will be and what I will be. The Kevin from elementary school would have been scared of being himself, but I'm not scared anymore. I'm not perfect, and that's perfectly fine. I choose to not let my past stop me from being my true self. I choose to be authentically myself. I knew it wasn't just the city I had to explore, it was myself. I made a pact with myself to understand who I am. I am now a confident, non-binary and queer person capable of enjoying life. Your worst enemy and your biggest critic, your biggest obstacle to ever stand in your way will always be yourself. It may sometimes never be good enough to you, but to everyone else you've created a masterpiece you can't see. Welcome to graduation. <laughs> I remember when I was about 11 years old. <laughs> I grew up not knowing anything modern. <laughs> okay, wait, hold on, hold on. We stop. <laughs> I want to break the cycle of generational setback. Good afternoon, prospectors. Please stop by the main office before you dismiss today to grab a mask. Everyone should wear a mask. Thank you. Bro, now I gotta do it again.